You have some examples of some of the beautiful homes on Pine Street. Now this street is one of the pre um, preeminent streets in Philadelphia. A lot of the old homes on the street. On the eastern side, east of Broad, the homes are a little bit older than the homes west of Broad on Pine Street. But uh, in the 70s, all these homes were in really deplorable shape. The 60s and 70s is when people were leaving Philadelphia. And so from the 60s and 70s, they've actually improved these homes so that now many, many people who can afford it want to live on Pine Street, want to live on Spruce Street, or in the other parts of Center City because the homes are just beautiful. You can take a look at this home, for example. Just amazing. Now, also just as beautiful as the homes are, the, uh, the taxes are very high too. So along with the great convenience and the great beauty, taxes have increased by a lot. So that's become a big issue for the different neighborhoods in Philadelphia. For years, the taxes were not increased. And it was always a question of fairness. How do you increase taxes on someone who's maybe getting $1,000 a month and make the taxes $6,000 a year from $500 a year? So there was a big debate about that. And so the city and the state decided to gradually ease in the taxes, but they have increased in a lot of neighborhoods in Philadelphia due to the increased value and the increased in migration of many people from the suburbs. Uh, many of the youth and uh, that have uh, grown up in the suburbs prefer living in the city. And a lot of people that are empty nesters that no longer want to live in the suburbs, they prefer moving to the city where they can do things in the evening, go to the theater, walk around without a car. So and even though they might have a car, they prefer the ease of uh, walking around. Oh, these are more examples of the beautiful homes on Pine Street. This is just to give more of a perspective of the kinds of homes that are on Pine Street and what the street looks like. It's one of those beautiful streets. Now, the homes that we're looking at right now were reconstructed. A lot of times in the 60s and 70s, the abandoned homes were just left in really bad shape. Some of them were so bad that they had to be torn down. So as a result, there were empty lots all over the city uh, in the 60s, 70s, 80s. And then in the 90s and the 2000s, many people came back and poured a lot of money back into a lot of the properties. But some of the properties, which were empty lots, you couldn't really do anything with. So they had to build new housing. And these homes here are an example of the new housing that was created to replace the homes that were torn down or the empty lots that were left. But it's really a great city in Philadelphia, really great living in different parts of the city. And uh, it's like one of those big cities with the small town feel. So it makes people very happy to live here. And the cost of living in Philadelphia is really not that high compared to Washington, compared to New York, compared to Los Angeles. And that's one of the reasons why people are willing to make that compromise. Like one of these homes here might be about a million dollars. Now a similar home in Washington would be about three million dollars. And a similar home in a similar neighborhood in New York would be about ten million dollars. So you can see the price disparity. And of course, there aren't as many opportunities in Philadelphia, but still people like it because the cost of living remains stable versus the soaring cost of living in San Francisco, the soaring cost of living in New York, the soaring cost of living in Los Angeles. And a lot of that is primarily due to the fact that uh, there's a lot of additional services that are required by many people in the different cities. So the cities and the states require a lot more in taxes. So it's good and it's not good. You know, it's good when you're receiving the services it's bad when the government say, look, you, you must compensate the government to pay for all the required services. And you know, that's the big debate that society has with itself. How much in services do people need? And what do people want? And where do people want to live?
Now, someone wants minimal services. You could live far away from everyone where there are very few restrictions. But then when you're in a big city like Philadelphia, one of the top 10 cities in the country, you must compromise and realize there will be an increased demand for taxes. But look at what you have here. Beautiful neighborhoods, everything's clean, everything's maintained, and it's really nice to live in a city like this. And this is again, Pine Street, and we're seeing all the beautiful homes on Pine Street. Examples of the beautiful homes. Quaint Street on Philadelphia. This is Spruce Street. Just like Pine Street, this about 40 years ago was dilapidated, deplorable, a street that you wouldn't want to live on. But what happened is people came back as they did on Pine Street. And you see the result of everyone coming back. Beautiful homes, quaint, beautiful. This is not the way the homes were 40 years ago. And it's only because people wanted to come back to the cities. And this was not just in Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, New York, all the main cities had this problem, but it was a, a demographic issue. People might look at it as the cities themselves had problems, but no, it was a, a demographic issue where the people decided they wanted to leave the cities and go to the suburbs. Post-World War II, plenty of housing, housing was cheap, energy was cheap, people felt that it was much better to leave the city. So when you had your income earners leaving the city, the cities were left with the same expenses, but uh, much less in income. And as a result, you had uh, a big decline in the housing stock that only recovered when people realized that it was good to live in the city again. Now, you might not even believe this, but about 30 or 40 years ago, there were homes, many homes in Philadelphia that had tin covering the windows because they didn't want people just to break in and uh, do some damage to the house inside. But you can see how beautiful the homes are now, how people really want to live in them. And as I mentioned earlier, each of these homes are about a million, million and a half, still much less than the homes would be in Washington and much, much less than a row house or a townhouse would be in New York City. You can see how beautiful these homes are. And you could take a closer look here on Spruce Street to the, and taking a look at the architecture for some of these homes. Magnificent. Now, this is a historic district. So what happens with a historic district, you need permission to change anything on the facade. So like when a window has a problem, uh, you need a special person to come in to change the window and a special kind of window, a historic window. Or if you want to paint, you need to get permission for the color and the kind of paint that you're using because it's a historic district. They really want people to maintain the quality of the neighborhood, to maintain the quality of the homes. Now that presents a burden to the homeowner too, but a lot of people going and buying a home in a historic district are already aware of the difficulties that will be faced. It's just sometimes people enter into the transaction and purchase one of these homes uh, being self-aware of the difficulty, but then once you have to buy a new window and it costs you a thousand or two thousand dollars, then you become much, much more acutely aware of how being in a historic district is good and not good. And this is particularly a nice house with particularly nice architecture. And we're at 7th and Spruce. You can see all the beautiful homes around here. 